Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We are guestless tonight. We had a scheduling snafu. We will bring someone back, I promise. Um, but tonight we are going to focus a little bit on the Toyota Land Cruiser and the Lexus GX that has now become a thing. Yeah, the um, C250 and GX 550. It sounds so silly when you say it like that. I don't know why. I don't know, but... <laughs> Hey, I mean, you got to go from 200 somewhere and you got to right. go from. They're just fun numbers, I guess. Not that the numbers mean anything like they used to, you know, 470, 460 on the Lexus side, at least had a displacement. Right. And some Which, I need to talk to you about 4.6 versus 4.7 later. Somebody asked me a question about it. And I was like, I don't want to deal with that right now. I'll deal with uh, it. Timing change. Talk well. That's all you need to know. So chain is in the four six four seven yes. belt. Yep. Reliability the same? More or less. I mean, more or less. Okay. Question about the four seventy and the four seven, which is the same four seven as the Forerunner and the Tundra and all that is Sequoia. If, Sequoia, yeah. If you buy it fifth hand, do you know that the belt has been done every? I think it's 100, 100, 105, maybe 110. 90,000. 90? Okay. So 90. I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the far side of it. Well, um, let's, let me let me rephrase. It's 90 for the larger SUV. So like Sequoia was 90. I think 100 mm-hmm. Series is 90. Forerunner might be less. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Or I'm sorry, Tracks. more mileage, like yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, less frequent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but general longevity, yeah. I mean, they're the... 5.7 that Toyota built, past tense, rest in peace. Um, the 4.6 <laughs> and the 4.7 are probably three of the 10 most reliable engines ever built and probably in the top five. So awesome. wouldn't worry too much. But yeah, we can talk more about that. Um, yeah, we can, we'll do that off air. <laughs> or maybe we'll do it as a show. Or on air. <laughs> I, I, think, I think GX 460 versus 470 and you know the merits of the Toyota engines is probably a good conversation to have uh maybe that's something we real curt in for once he's a little less yeah. crazy these days but yeah um so this ties well into our conversation about land cruiser new land cruiser and the new lexus gx um so to set the precedent i think everybody listening to the show probably knows at this point that there is a new lexus gx it's called the 550 and there is a new Toyota Land Cruiser, which is the LC250. Um, my screen is slowly going to share eventually. <laughs> my favorite part is my shared screen is live on YouTube, but it isn't shared live for us. So well, well, we're going <laughs> to talk out our asses then. Uh, it's the blue one. It's okay. Yes, it's the blue. Blue with a white roof. It's it's FJ Cruiser style, which I fucking love. So, Well, it's FJ Cruiser style, which is FJ40 style. Like yes. It, it, it's Toyota style. Which heritage? I mean, it's yeah, it's great. It, it's the new heritage heritage edition. Um, so yeah, so the I think the biggest headline, the two biggest headlines. Okay, let's scrap that. Three biggest headlines for the new Land Cruiser are number one, <laughs> number A. Uh, instead of it being a ninety thousand dollar entry price, it's fifty five ish plus or minus right. two, depending on where numbers actually land. Which I presume Toyota's. Um, gonna, you know, like pinpoint based on inflation and everything at the time of the actual on sale date. Um, point two is that it is on the GX platform, the global Land Cruiser Prado platform, instead of the full size LC300 and LX600 platform. Uh, so it's a little smaller than it used to be. And the third headline here is that it is a turbocharged four-cylinder with a hybrid system instead of what the last Land Cruiser that we had in the States was, which was a 5.7 liter V8, naturally aspirated, you know, big, like, just fuck everything kind of low compression um but yeah it's a uh, it's a huge departure and it, it it has its merits which 
for a lot of people aren't merits necessarily. And I mean, like, I don't think there's been a vehicle this defi- divisive in a long time in the off-road world. And it's the faithful diehard Land Cruiser people saying this isn't a Land Cruiser because it's complex and, you know, hybrid and it's on a Prado platform and not a full-size platform. Um, but in light of that, it has made the Land Cruiser much more accessible financially yeah. than it's been in. It, I mean, the 200 debuted in what? 08? You know? Uh, like, yes. It's a huge departure from the Land Cruiser that a lot of people have grown up with, which financially. When's the last time a new model came out sharing the same name and it cost less? Yeah, that's none of them. <laughs> no, literally nothing. Literally nothing. Well, um, and, like, I remember, like, in my younger years being like, oh, it's a Prado. That's not a real Land Cruiser. But, like, those things have been all over the world, too. Like, Prados are tried and true tested. Like, yes, yes it isn't the big, over-the-top, fluffy yeah, Land Cruiser anymore. They call it light duty. It's really medium duty versus a full Land Cruiser's heavy duty. So I I have an answer. Are they still going to be made in Japan? Yes. That is an I understanding. Understand. There are two plants. That I'm fine. The, there were two different <laughs> plants that the 200 was made at. And there was apparently varying quality between the two of them, which I didn't realize until recently. But... The Land Cruiser and the GX will both be made in Japan. It is not like, given the quality of the Tundra, you know, is still very high made in America. Yeah. But and and like there, there's no pickup truck that has better build quality than the Tundra. At least the second gen Tundra, the third gen Tundra might be a different story. Um, Yeah, we'll see. But it is. Toyota, uh, Toyota is not going to dishonor its Land Cruiser name. It's going to uphold everything that the right. Land Cruiser name has to be. Well, so, part part of it is where my brain goes to is like, yeah, I've, I've had an eighty, I've had a hundred, mm-hmm. but like the hundred series came with a V eight. No Land Cruiser before that had eight cylinders. Like, how right. dare they? And it independent front suspension. Like, how dare they get rid of a solid act? Like, every generation is going to have some version of advancement. This one just seems to be the biggest departure. And part of the reason is because the LC300 exists everywhere else in the world. Yeah. So, yes, you can still get, as a purist, that 300 series Land Cruiser that's going to be a little different. Or buy the LX600 here in the States. Like, that truck still exists for you if if you're one of those psycho purists. But, like, the also... The 200 series factories were at max capacity. Lieberman told us that years ago. Like, And they were selling on average over a 15 year or 14 year production run. They were averaging just over 3,000 a year in the States. Right. So and they horrendous. could not. Right. Horrendous. Exactly. So it's easier to drop those 3,000 into the Middle East or Australia markets where they yes. absolutely know those vehicles will be sold. Cool. Done. There, there's 3,000 more units for those guys. If we get these at a lower price point, mm-hmm. yes, I understand it's not this glorious luxury thing, but like not everybody wanted that crap. Like, and yeah, all of that, but above everything else is that we have to realize that, yes, the Land Cruiser name is one of the most important names in vehicles in the automotive right. world. But beyond that, Toyota is a business. They exist right. to sell vehicles, to make profits for their shareholders above and beyond everything else that the company, like the Land if they can't make money and stay in business, the Land Cruiser doesn't exist. Right. You know, it's dead and, no matter what. Hence, and the, hence why we're okay with them teaming up with Subaru to build. Exactly. Oh, BMW. For the weird EV. Super, I, yeah. yeah, Super, I still think is terrible, but that's just me. <laughs> um, no, but the Land Cruiser, so, and you have to put yourself in the frame of mind of Toyota in this instance. The 
traditional Land Cruiser buyer. The in- okay, backing up the enthusiast Land Cruiser buyer, yeah, who uses it for a hundred thousand miles to three hundred thousand miles, off roads it, overlands it, and does yeah. all their shit with it, is a second or third buyer, right? Which, as a business proposition, that it doesn't that's irrelevant, you know? Yeah. So the traditional Land Cruiser buyer is somebody who goes into the Toyota dealership and says, I want the most expensive, most reliable, most capable thing that you can sell me. And if it says Land Cruiser on it, they're going to buy it. And there's no concealable, like right. there's no viable business case for selling less than 3,200 vehicles a year in the States for a big manufacturer like Toyota. Like that's what like Lotus was selling for a couple of years when they just had the lease, you know? Yeah. That's, it's, it's not sustainable. Um, so call it 60 grand for a Land Cruiser with like good options. Yeah. You know, and, and there's going to be options. Like there's the, the base model, which is called, uh, 1954, 54, which is, uh, it, it always been. sounds like a, one of my parents' birth years. So yeah. that's why I'm like, yeah. This this no, I've seen the number go through Slack and everything else a couple God. of times. I'm like, I'm not so paying attention up. to that. It's like how close to? No, I shouldn't say that out loud. Well, and they um, also have the Tundra that's is seventeen ninety four. Yeah, which like yeah, like ugh, I just wish they would have called it like <laughs> you know like SR five. Yeah, SR base. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you can get. You know, round headlights and on the base one, or like the the middle trim. The most confusing is called Land Cruiser. Which is, fucking is it really? Sweet. Yeah, the, it, it's literally just called Land Cruiser. Um, I didn't get any images with the round headlights. I don't like them. Really? Yeah, I gotta go Why? find them now because I don't like. I just don't like them. I think they look goofy. I don't really like them on the Bronco either, and I know those are just LED rings. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of Bronco. It's kind of Defender. It's kind of. Uh, Jeep Renegade. Ooh, here's a fun image. It's a but with both. Thanks for the drive. Sells. Yes. You know? And that's absolutely okay. Somebody else could buy it. I'm totally right. fine with that. Yeah. I, 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 the, I really the drive did. presented an image with both headlights. So thank you, the drive. Oh my god, that just looks like it's got a lazy eye. <laughs> 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 it would it would have been better if they hadn't yeah. used almost two blue toned vehicles, but yeah. Yeah. Do you ever One, play Portal? <laughs> You ever played a video game portal? No, I missed that one. <laughs> oh, it kind of looks like like the uh, yeah. Anyways, um, needless to say, the the difference between the GX and the Land Cruiser is primarily in the drivetrain, and also in you know the fascia, which yeah, the front should, fascia should be the case. <laughs> um, the the but GX yeah. gets no round options. It's only the, the yeah, it's, it's the like the miniature Nike check LED swoosh kind of. I don't know yeah. how else to describe it for people listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, the GX gets the twin turbo V6, no hybrid, and the Land Cruiser gets the only hybrid, turbo four hybrid only. And Motor Trend kindly has given me the numbers. So the Toyota is 326 horsepower, 465 pound feet of torque, which is not nothing. Right. Uh, and pending it doesn't weigh a metric fuck ton, is actually quite a bit of power. And the GX, because it is a non hybrid, gets 349 and 479. So it like just edges it out by 23 and 24. And the. Land Cruiser is an eight-speed auto, and the GX is a ten-speed auto. Which, I mean, there it's like, you know, give and take. Where do you yep. want, where do you want your complexity and weight? You know. Um, well, and one of the things that uh, a friend and I were discussing the other day, uh, shout out to Margie of, like Sequoia does not have a flat cargo area because mm-hmm. of the battery pack and all that stuff. So like, nor does she Land was, Cruiser. Right, so she was leaning more towards potentially looking at a GX because it would have that flat rear compartment that mm. is very important to a lot of us that 
potentially yes, sleep and or load fridge slides and things like that. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, definitely something we were thinking about. Well, in any capacity, um, I think we can communally say that we are very much looking forward to seeing these. Yeah. Um, I personally am very much looking forward to seeing if, uh, if the launch of the 250 and the GX 550 means the tanking of Land Cruiser 200 prices, which would be great for my dream of uh, getting into <laughs> one after the GX. <laughs> Ooh, dude, if that, if that is the case, dude, that might be where we look for Sarah's next vehicle. That's what you should look for. Because in two to three years' time, we're potentially looking at another driver in the family. Ooh. And he's actually a little Move sketch. So we might we might do some vehicle <laughs> shuffling where like the hundred series goes to him. We put mm. the Sequoia on the more responsible kid and then put Sarah in the two hundred series. Okay. But we'll have to look okay. at that in the future. Well, yeah, and it dep- it really depends because uh, they're, you know, new cars that come out with complex powertrains. Right. Like when the F80 <laughs> M3 came out, it just brought up the prices of the V8 M3 that, you know, was the predecessor. So uh, I think it's hilarious you didn't go to former employer Volvo there <laughs> and throw their twin charge yeah. turbo and super. Tur- are, you, are you going back? Like, is that? <laughs> no, I'm not going back. I just. Right. So, like, the amount of issues you dealt with a very modern yeah. and complex powertrain yeah. on an almost well, daily basis. I know, but we're thinking about maybe getting one for Sam. Not a twin charge. Just right. A, just a regular. Just a regular, normal. Car. Possibly I, just an electric one. But. I did see a, uh, a TikTok <sighs> video going around of a dude who is six foot, eight feet inches tall uh, get into the LC250 hmm. and fit relatively well well so kurt, kurt williams friend of the show land cruiser heritage museum you know cruiser show outfitters <laughs> huh cruiser that, outfitters cruiser Out, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll drop all the his day job. land i'll drop um, all of his yeah he posted a picture of himself sitting in the driver's seat of the 250 on i hate mud and he's not a short dude and he's got he i think he said he had like four inches of room. So, and the one thing I called out in those, uh, to, well, at least with my friends, is those, the one that I saw the six foot eight guy get into, mm-hmm. non uh, sunroof equipped yet. So, so he's going to lose two to three inches. Apparently on the GX, there's a panoramic, panoramic sunroof, normal sunroof, and a slip top, which I don't think you've been able to get a non sunroof GX since early 470s. And I know okay. for a fact that. Since I think the date, well, as I say, I know for a fact, I don't actually know, but I think since the debut of the 100 series, they have all had sunroofs, including full run of 200. So you can go. So it's 1998 on? I think so. (laughs) And I I know for a fact you can get a, um, actually, no, for a fact, not just saying this, you can get a slick top 250. I'm okay with it. I I don't need a sunroom or sunroom. Sun. I do need a sunroom. Oh, I don't oh, need sun. a sunroof. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Well, you would. You're very yeah. square I'm just dependent. Boxing <laughs> my little patio in the backyard. Yeah. Uh, I need so. some uh, contractors to return some email texts and emails, as you can <laughs> see to where my brain went. Um, uh, man, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should just get some fucking class plating. Dude, the plastic sheeting at like Home Depot is not that expensive. Like, really? Yeah, it's like twenty. Well, that was pre early pandemic, so now it's probably like fifty bucks a sheet, where it was like twenty something before. So it used to be six cents, and now it's six thousand yep. dollars. Anyway, so there is one that? Land Cruiser that we did not discuss with Dan on our last episode that also was revealed oh, the, the same day. Yeah, the seventy series and. um also a friend of show, Joel, who was uh, photographed driving it in this picture. Is that he Joel is, driving? That is Joel driving. He is behind the wheel of the uh, of the flatbed crew cab new 70s series. So Toyota did this big launch for the Land Cruiser on last Thursday, which was Thursday the 
Was it Thursday? No. We recorded no. on Tuesday, didn't we? Tuesday, yeah. August 1st. It right. was the first, yeah. It was August 1st. And they have this huge event at the Her- Land Cruiser Heritage Museum. And they started the show by lining up like all of the Land Cruisers that were important over the last 60 years. And then they brought out the new 70, which nobody was expecting. And just kind of like didn't say anything about it. And then yeah. press release the next morning. Like, by the way, we updated, you know, our our 70 series, which famously you can get with a five-speed manual and a 4.5 liter turbo diesel V8. Which is yes. Probably the greatest combination in the world right now. Um, but now they have a turbo four-cylinder paired to an auto. Is that? Right? Oh. Yeah. Sure. Optional. Um, but they updated the nose, which looks more like an FJ nose, and it's got. Which I don't the, like. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's subjective. <laughs> it would look better on a dark vehicle painted with a painted grill to match. I think um, what I, bothers me is the chrome bumper. Well, yeah, chrome bumpers are just horrible on anything. Yeah, but and I'm trying to also, think: Do I have any chrome bumpers? No, I don't have any chrome yeah. bumpers. I think the hood is is the hood new? I can't I can't tell, but it's the, yeah. The, that, that's what the two hardwood series style hood with the huge crevasse in the middle. You know that like this this four inch slope on the front is what I'm assuming it's four inches. I don't know what it would be in centimeters, but like this expanse <laughs> right here is part the part of it where I'm like I don't like that. Uh, yeah, um, somebody just joined. Oh man, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> I literally just got home and I was like, what was I supposed to do today? Oh, right. Right. Oh, you you were about okay. to get the email from me going, hey, can we reschedule? Yeah. <laughs> or the uh, audio listeners, Wild Emmy appears. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> um, am I too late? Can we still talk? Yeah, you're, no, no, you're good. We're, we're good for about another 10, 15 minutes, and then we got to bounce. So you're good. Okay. Perfect. Yay. Yeah. Well, welcome to Land Cruiser Talk. Yes. We were just going over 2024s. We we hadn't taken the time to go through it last show because it was revealed as we were recording. Yeah. We were literally streaming while it happened. Yeah, dude, I can't, I don't know what you guys have said so far, but like, I can't believe how cheap it is. Right? It's exactly where Ross went. <laughs> so I pulled this, I actually pulled this up. The Land Cruiser's MSRP in 2008 when the 200 debuted was $68,000 in 2008. That's pretty, right? That's a huge number. And now I it's know. more, it's 15 or 12 grand more expensive than the 250. Yeah, no, that's, that is amazing. And everything, it looked, I'm not sure how Toyota measures their ground clearance because their ground clearance is always like, at like an inch or so lower than everybody else's. So I don't know if it's actually low or if they're measuring like at the dip or what the story is, but I was like, yeah. oh, only like 8.7 inches 8. of ground clearance. That's not really a lot, but it's not a lot. So my, like, my favorite my favorite part of what you guys were just talking about, $68,000 in 2008 is the equivalent of $96,363 oh, yeah. right now, which is why everything oh, else feels like it's a hundred fucking grand yeah. all the time. Like that's yeah. what Fully loaded 200, that's about what it cost. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's- the heritage was 90, you know? That is nuts. That is nuts. That's a big number. So, hey, what's Hi, going guys? on? Hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> it's been a, when was the last time we recorded? It oh, it's been a hot minute. Ooh, yeah, it's been a while. Um, well, I actually, uh, I come to Baja, so I'm I'm coming at you from Baja, Mexico. I, sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, I needed to get out of the heat, and I have a place uh, south of Ensenada on the Pacific side. But you so get out of the heat, so you went to Baja. That's well, yeah, just... but because I'm basically like right at the beach, so I mean, it's like 70 degrees here. It's perfect. Okay. Oh my gosh, I, I just I'm I've just been like a two weeks solid with close to triple digits and like 90 yeah. percent humidity. So yeah. like that it sounds absolutely magical. 103 degrees last weekend where I was, and like also nine. It's terrible. Anyways, ah. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I am down here. I did not take Buddy. Uh, Buddy is, Buddy the Offered Miata is, uh, is still, is moving, but uh, also needs a new drive shaft. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> There's worse things. <laughs> Are you liking custom drive shaft territory yet with the um, lift and everything? 
Yeah, kind of. I I did buy an upgraded drive shaft from Flying Miata only because um, the stock ones are not rebuildable. So okay. Okay. if you get a stock one, um, once the U joints go, you just have to get a whole brand new one. And I'm like, pay a hundred dollars more now and get that loaded up and get that um, get that so that you can rebuild it because I know they're gonna go again. Like I know they're yeah. gonna go. Yeah. So you need to uh, uh, on the back of the cage carry an extra drive shaft like people do with like crazy lifted, you know, 2,500 GMCs. Well, <laughs> because I they know it's going to go. I can't because I already carry an extra um, axle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Because uh, that. that has a better chance of going than the dry shaft. But um, that picture you guys just showed of Buddy at the Gambler 500. So I did that event and then I shot a video with Hoonigan, which I'm very excited about. Both of those with the car, a hundred percent not prepped. A hundred percent. My shaft making noise, different shocks in the front and in the rear. Just like, oh my god, it was so bad. Oh boy, but it still looks <laughs> yeah, awesome in the picture. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, listen. The, the thing is, so uh, we're like right in the middle of a suspension swap on that car. So um, have so right now there's Fox shocks in the rear, but then I still have the Coney's in the front because to make them fit in the front, there's all kinds of like custom work that needs to happen that hasn't happened yet. So driving that with like a really soft rear and then a stiffer front, I was just like, oh, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> it bounce, was oversteer, catch it, oh bounce, God. oversteer. Yeah. Oh, it was like, I was just like constantly doing this. Was it at least a little Sounds predictable or were you just like fighting for your life? No, no, no. It was vaguely predictable. And you just okay. realize like, you know what? Just slow down a little bit. Like you're just out here for fun, yeah. so don't worry about it. Um, Did you run? And I mean, I still sent it pretty, pretty hardcore, so that was fun. And then the Hoonigan video was really fun, and that comes out uh, beginning of uh, I think November first. Nice. Oh wow! Well, yeah. we had Tate on the show last. Yeah, or no? Two weeks ago. There's been two shows, and yeah, two, we, shows. two weeks ago <laughs> we recorded with Tate. So, okay, good. Uh, yeah. So, did you run Hoopty with the uh, with Buddy? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny. Like I, I usually, when I go to gambler events, I'm like, here's a hundred dollars for your charity. I'm not going to go pick up trash. I'm just going to go do the hoopty cross. Uh, <laughs> but I will contribute with money. Yeah. Cause like I how mean, much trash am I going to pick up in that car? I, you know I, I saw mean? boats like, no. on random cars. So I'm always <laughs> shocked by what people actually pull, you know, yeah. relative to vehicle size, but yeah. don't blame me. Definitely. Yeah. No, I did. I did see a Corolla, an old Corolla, come in with a boat on its roof. So I probably didn't say anything. It's so, <laughs> your hundred bucks, I'm sure, went to. Uh, yeah, yeah. To but I'm like, because I just have a race. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. All right. So, uh, so speaking of buddy, can we talk mid four hundred? Oh my god! I haven't talked to you since the mid four hundred. No, I don't think you've recorded in a year. It's Is been a hot really? minute. That's what you yeah. just tell me. Yeah, you guys. Um, yeah, so uh, the way the Mint 400 started was um, Dylan, I think you say his last name, Full. I'm not exactly sure, but he's a kid on Instagram. He also has a lifted Miata, but he's got one with the the long travel on it. And, uh, and he's also always breaking it. Always, always breaking it. Um, but he's not dumb. He just tries a lot of things he's not dumb he just i like that qualifier there yeah 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 yeah. no he's not dumb he just he just does a lot of a lot of things and uh he was like i'm gonna be the first miata to race the mint 400 and i'm like like hell you are that was the whole reason why i did that like i wasn't oh, just beat up. <laughs> no, i wasn't really looking to do the mint i just didn't yeah. want him to be the first one to do it so and like, that's a win in of itself yeah yeah yeah. i mean we're not it, we're, we're not pals or anything but we're friendly on the internet and everything so um and then i i saw him at the baja 1000 and i was like hey so just so you know like i'm gonna i'm gonna be at the mint too so it's on he's like all right it's on and then he like lost interest and he never went out oh. and did it so uh i and i was like well i guess i'll just race in sportsman and then i'll have to do however many laps sportsman has to do, right? Because right. it's called the Mint 400, but there's only certain classes that actually get 400 miles. Yeah, that's Dylan, right? He's yeah. got a pretty good thing. And he'll do really dumb stuff with it. Uh, I saw snow tracks 
Yeah, he put snow tracks on his. This one, he gets some pretty good air in, in a lot of his videos. Um, he's actually rolled it, which I'm like, how do you roll this? But okay. It looks like uh, his noggin's the same height as the roll bar. Yeah, that no bruise. Yeah, that. yeah, right. This one, I think now he's got a cage in it, but at this time, like, he That's... only had a roll bar. And, like, he wasn't even wearing a neck restraint for a long time and with, like, three-point harnesses and stuff. I'm like, dude, none of what you're doing is safe. Nobody <laughs> wants to see somebody get hurt driving. Yeah, like, don't you enjoy walking? Um, But so for the mint, you know, not every class gets actually – gets 400 miles like the, the higher the trophy trucks and the class ones and and those upper echelon vehicles they get 400 miles but as you go down in the limited classes you get fewer and fewer laps so if you run a sportsman you you probably get two laps maybe it's three but it's probably just two and i'm like well i'll just run in sportsman because where else am i going to run a miata right um and then tate and chuck from hoopty cross they were like, well, let's get a gambler yeah. class together. And Matt Martelli, who owns the Mint 400, he was like super into it. So they gave us our own class and we left last. <laughs> we were very, very last. Uh, we had one lap, which at, now that I've done it, I'm like, thank God it was only one lap because I don't know if Mark could have done it. How many miles How is miles? one lap? For us, it was 95 miles. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> For one lap? One lap was 95 miles. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So we were, and I was like, we'll probably do like 20 miles per hour average. And I was, I was right. It took us four hours. So a little bit more than, a little bit more than 20 miles per hour. Um, and uh, we, there were four others in the class. So there was me, there was the, um, the gold Mercedes diesel. It's in the background of the picture that Chris just yeah. showed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's good. He's, he learned a lot from that race, I think, uh, because he had he shared the oil pan and he realized i think he's realized oh. that desert racing is way different from hoopty cross so he was there um a little subaru justy was there <laughs> it was so cool hell yeah um, the, the lifted limousine was there and then uh chuck and tate were from gambler were in the uh nissan hard body and of any of the vehicles that should have finished and won it should have been the hard body should have been the hard body yeah. Yeah. But me, like, race mile 30, I saw their tire was like this. Maybe oh, it was like, right. I don't know, but it wasn't It wasn't straight up and down. And I was like, oh, they're, they're in trouble. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. So I was just like, look, I'm just going to be a turtle. And I, none of these guys have actually done a desert race before. The Subaru had. So the, if mm -hmm. anyone, I needed to worry about the Subaru in terms of desert racing experience. But. I'm like, and they're all dudes and they're all going to overdrive. So I'm just going to be a turtle and take care of the car. And then I'll probably win. And like, oh, wow, that's yeah. what happened. You also have deep vested interest in your car versus like, I'm sure some other people are just throwing caution to the wind. Yeah. I mean, like, like for me though, getting buddy together, all it was, the only thing that I spent money on, I spent money on the supercharger, but everything else oh. was just safety stuff. It was right. the roll cage, it was the seats, it was the belts, um, it was a fuel cell, it was all of that stuff. That's what all my money went to. But then I knew I wanted a supercharger because I wanted to get my power to weight ratio back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Back up to something where it's, you know, where it should be. Which supercharger did you put on it? Uh, I found an older Jackson Racing supercharger that was, Ooh. yeah, that was like new in box, essentially. Is that like a pre-emissions no, mine it's carb legal, but we'll okay. see we'll see what happens next year. <laughs> oh god. When you go for the uh, sniff test, we'll find out. Yeah. I mean it has the sticker. That's good. Dude, that's but fantastic. I don't know if that is gonna work. Um I also don't know if I just if well, you guys just stuff on our list, Chris. Where do you want Polaris to go? side by side is where I want to go next because that's I right, think yeah, the most hilarious is. thing. Okay. Okay. Why is that hilarious? Because it's the thing that you and Camille and I have all traded uh, texts about. Like, you're going to have to tow it to get it anywhere. Like, well, yeah, but then. You I mean, I know that's like side, side by side life is towing side anyway. Side. Yeah, and then you but I don't own a truck. Worry about how bad you, you know, fucked it up. Side. Oh, my God, that thing. Oh, wow. These are all the player's expedition. That's a car. It, it's priced like a car. 
It's a car. I mean, listen, there was a lot of great things about it, right? It will go over anything. Can we, can we set uh, the stage for the listener? So it's yeah. a yes. Polaris Ranger, a, four, a crew cab Polaris Ranger. Uh, it's the thousand. Is yeah. it the Pro Star or is it the Triple? I don't it's, remember. It's, I think it's the <laughs> So Polaris <laughs> now, they're they doing a three cylinder in side by side. Yeah. Um, I think it's the Pro Star twin cylinder, which is a parallel twin, not a V twin, which is kind of cool. Which is the same engine that's in the quad that's in my garage right now. Yeah, um, yeah. But the outfit, but I mean, like a Jeep. Yeah, it's a car. Yeah, it's a car. There's a windshield. There's windows. There's air conditioning. There's a radio. Um, full doors. Was it full completely cab. water and dust tight? I mean, not really. Like the inside still got a little dirty. It, you know, it's it, the seals are not like an actual car car. Dust but I mean, it might as well be a car, right? The thing is, though, I mean, side by sides already roll over, right? For no reason yep. at all, and then you put another 150 pounds on the roof. No, yeah, don't don't do that. If you're anyone out there who wants to get this this little Polaris, don't get the rooftop tent. Just no. don't. It's an older kind where putting it up is kind of a big fat pain in the ass, and it's. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think the risk of rollover is worth the tent. Mm-hmm. Um, just camp on the ground it's way easier and way safer yeah the, cool. cool it's a polaris suburban yeah but the little Wait, two-door there they have a little two-door and i'm sorry it's so adorable i thought i was like <laughs> a little two-door in orange i'm like that's so cute so they just launched this or they just announced this past week a uh maybe it was two weeks ago at this point um, <laughs> Come on. how's that not a bug it's a bug it's proportional, <laughs> but they just announced the uh, the Ranger fifteen hundred, and they're calling yeah. it extreme duty. So it yeah. can tow, it tows thirty five hundred pounds. I think mm-hmm. the payload fifteen hundred, which is like yeah, it's yeah. pickup truck territory. It is. You know? I'm I'm actually driving it. I'm on the press drive next week. Oh really? Um, oh, that's awesome. I think yeah, I think it's next week. Uh, we're going to a ranch in Colorado, and um, I better be toting some hay bales, or I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> you have to use I, at least half of the stone capacity or it's trip waste. Yeah. I, I think this press shot is from where you're going. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> probably, dude, they probably parked the cart, the machines out there, and just left them there. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Based, yeah. based on all, all that fencing <laughs> on the back. It has uh-huh. the RTR, Von Gittin Jr. RTR. Yeah, grill insert light looking things. Yeah, and you can. There's room for six. I just I had thought that there was room for four, right? I just counted the headrests. I'm like, oh, there's four headrests. There are bench seats on the front and the rear. That's a terrible. Oh, gosh, for everybody on board. Can you imagine? Not good. It's like, I'm like, who's gonna be driving this? You know who's gonna be driving this? Like big dudes who work on ranches. Yeah. Who might fit dudes that weigh 200 pounds in that? There it goes. Sitting there goes your payload. Middle on the back, like on your way, like 30 <laughs> miles out on the ranch. Nope. <laughs> oh my gosh. I found a photo of the interior and I had to triple check it like four times. Cause I was like, this is a, like a, it's a car interior. Oh yeah. They have navigation and touch screens, everything that you, yeah. The footwell lighting, the yep. footwell lighting is what that got is, me. I'm like, <laughs> those vents actually look like Land Rover vents. I th- am I thinking like or Land super Land? duties? They look like super, they're straight off a is. super it duty. It looks like super duty. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, it probably is. It's probably pulled from the same supplier. Yeah, yeah, it might be. But, but yeah, they have that the lead or ride ride command system. Ride command I think great. where it yeah. will like it will talk to the different uh, different vehicles that are in your group, so you always know where your last person is. And I mean, mm-hmm. it's pretty. It's fairly robust. Ride it's better than anything else that I've driven. Um, I was just on the Honda Talon, mm-hmm. which I wow. love the Honda Talon because you've actually, you've got a real transmission. It's like way more engaging to drive. Just but tell us about the Talon. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You drove a, it was a Fox Live Valve model. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, it's, it's definitely not, it's, it's underpowered. Um, sure. and you can, the stuff that we were doing, like we were kind of like going through trees and doing like tighter trails. Where were so you? in that, 
at Mid Mid America Motorsports Park. Okay. Okay. So for those trails, it like the power was fine. And you know, we really we didn't ever really need to put it into low gear. We did a couple times just to like keep take care of the trail mm -hmm. and not chew up the trail. But I mean it would do anything that we wanted it to do in sorry, in two wheel drive. It would do anything we wanted it to do in two wheel okay. drive. Yeah. Um but then they they have like a short course there and they had a pro driver take us out in in a stock one. Mm -hmm. And that was where you could tell you're like, oh my God, you just want to go faster right here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's in a racing situation, you know? Sure. The, if you're, I would think that if you're out in the desert where you've got a lot of wide open space and you just really want to go fast across a lake bed, you might notice the lack of power. But if you're doing technical stuff, like it was fine. It was yeah. really fun. And, and, and real having the paddle shifters, yep. like it's just a more pleasant and engaging driving experience than anything with the CVT. Yeah, the last one that had a real transmission was the Yamaha YZX, which mm -hmm. actually had a manual transmission, manual sequential yeah. transmission, which Wouldn't everybody that drove it was like, this is unusable on the trail. Like if you're rock oh, rolling, really? it was horrible. Um, yeah, for, yeah. for fun stuff, it was great, but yeah, yeah the town the, and was the one that you got, uh, right seat blasting, was that a two seat or a four seat? I think we were in a, we were in the four seat. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. They're the quite a bit more nimble and lively in two seat. Yeah. I mean, the guy, listen, the guy did not pull any punches. I mean, we jumped the thing. It landed great with those Fox live valves. You know, mm -hmm. it, it wants to jump. It wants to turn. It'll, it'll hold right to the point where you're like, oh yeah, we're, um, we're 100% going to roll over right now. We're 100% going to roll over. But like it, it just allows for so much body roll without, mm -hmm. you know, getting to that, getting to that point of physics. Um, that you can you can really toss that thing around. Yeah, and live valve is awesome. Live valve is like I'm trying to think of the easiest way to describe it. It's basically like there's constant like ev like millisecond monitors that yeah like KBSS in a in a Toyota or a Lexus yeah. yeah like offsets the opposite side. That's kind of what live valve does. It like knows what's about to happen and preloads the right side if you're going into a left-hand corner. It's just, it's smart. It's smarter than, yeah. than we are. Yeah, it takes into consideration your steering angle, your yaw position, your speed, your throttle position, all of that stuff. And then, and basically takes that in every, I don't know, it's probably like 20 times a second or something. Yeah, um, so that it then knows where you're going to go and what you're going to do. And this was amazing. Like uh, on press events, we never, you never get to drive at night ever. And the fact that we went on a night trail run and then we got to go through a river, like yeah. that was pretty cool. Dude, a ride around this much of the liability thing must have been crazy. Yeah, no, that was that was pretty awesome. Well, it, was like, a, it, was, it was a good trip. The amount of lighting, I would have known it was night until you wrote, I read the word night and then paid attention to the shadows around it above. Did like see there's the so bar? much lights. See the bar yeah. on top of that thing? Yeah. I know it was pretty cool. It was really, it was, it was fun. Yeah. That was, was one of, one of my earliest off-roading memories with my 2004 Jeep Wrangler was with the Orlando Jeep club. And they were like, Hey man, we're going to go for a night run and we're going to find some caves. I knew none of these people. I just showed up <laughs> and drove my Jeep and I was like, yeah, yes we are. And I drove my TJ <laughs> through the woods in the middle of the night to some weird ass cave mm. where I went through a <laughs> hole slightly bigger than me and then into a large cave. But like, it was a very, so, very uh, good chance early on in my life. I died down there, but I, I mean, I could be a ghost now. So weird. Yeah, of like, these people could take my kidney, and I would. They no one would ever find me. One hundred percent. Yeah. Florida, <laughs> Florida man it. is real, but I didn't know it yet. Rumor has it that one of his kidneys is still in that cave. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, is that why my back hurts? <laughs> that's, one, that's only one of the reasons. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, can we uh, let's pivot a bit? Do you want to do Ranger Raptor or VinFast? Oh God. God. Well, I haven't driven the Ranger Raptor, so okay. I can't really, I can't. The only thing I can say is that I've seen it. Um, a lot of things on it look great. Mm -hmm. um, the <clears throat> front approach angle doesn't look to be enough. Doesn't, it doesn't look great. It's and it's, it's not great based on, on the competition. 
Um, I, but I think a lot of people are just going to put some bigger tires on that anyway, and that's going to help Ooh. help that out. Yeah, that's some overhead. Yeah, but I'm stoked to drive it. I can't wait because, I mean, I like trucks, but I, big trucks. I don't. I personally don't need a big truck, so big I would like. Are dumb. Yeah, I don't need Unless a big truck. I just, I just need to be able to tow Buddy, and that's fine. But like, look at all that space. Look at all the space in that wheel well. You definitely yeah. fit. Big that's the, the so much room for activities thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I'm stoked to drive it. I I don't know exactly when the press drive is going to be, but I better be on it. Yeah. And 400 um, horsepower on a truck that size is yeah. This is gonna be and so much lot. fun. Much more torque. I think it's like 465. Yeah, yeah. Um, it'll be a good time, especially. Yeah, get those stupid boards off. Like nobody yeah. needs those boards. So, those are <laughs> those are. Yeah, but see, look at I mean that approach angle. It's not a lot. It's pretty clean underneath. Crouching yeah, but only seven really inches of ground clearance. Like that's yeah, bad. For a that's Raptor? For a Ranger Raptor, yeah. That's what I mean. Like that needs a lift kit big time. But even their tremor stuff, like the tremor on the um on the Ranger, the tremor package, even that needs like an extra inch of lift. Yeah. So but you it's know. old. The whole platform is old. And like we had Mike Levine on the show, and and don't get me wrong, like the Ranger is a good truck. It's not a bad mm-hmm. truck. You know, the Bronco is a good truck. It's not like, but it's all the platform is old. It's like, Chris, what do we always joke about when we talk about like who was president when it got, <laughs> when it got launched? Like, I think Obama was. It was Obama in for sure. First, it was his first term. Yeah. Like, first term Obama's the, new the Ranger old, platform. Ranger came out, yeah. you know, like, well, but now we're based on this one. Now we're finally into at least the global platform because for a while the global cars were the global trucks were like one step ahead of us. So mm-hmm. now at least everyone is together being old. Right, but it's like but I have a. Go I have a. Uh, I, I haven't taken many automotive trips, but one of them was with Ford up to Dearborn, and I can remember the most exciting thing I saw was the global Ranger in Dearborn when we didn't get it. Like it was, this was pre them releasing it in the U S and I could just be like, that's the global Ranger. But this was like 2012. Like it was so <laughs> long ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I know, I know. Well, but the thing is, it's like, it's making money. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately that's all that matters. We were talking before mm-hmm. about, about Land Cruiser, like Toyota's a business. Ford's a mm-hmm. business. If the trucks yeah. sell and they make profits on them, then and yeah, like based off Emmy's Ranger Raptor video, you can have a Land Cruiser uh, two fifty for fifty five, or you can have a Ranger Raptor for fifty seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know where well, I'm you'll going. Go a, lot faster, <laughs> a lot faster in the Ranger. Yes, and, uh, a lot faster. Yeah. Um, uh, well, and I'm also supposed to drive the ZR2, which I still have not I driven the new ZR2, and I'm very excited about that because um, the Multimatic shocks on that are so good. Um, I'm, so I'm, I'm stoked to see if they've made improvements in like the interior and some of the other. Because I, I, my truck is a Colorado. It's not a ZR2, but it's a 2015 Colorado, and I'm okay. just like, I hate this interior. I hate the transmission. I so- hate it. Like. I'd so you needed to buy the GMC? No, no, I mean, I got it from my dad, so I, I didn't really have a choice, but like... Right, yeah. I just spent a week with a Canyon AT4. Yeah? Um, and have mixed thoughts on it. Like, part of it is we it. think the wheels look like Richard's. Yeah, it's got dick wheels. There's no way around mm-hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and Plucker is our commander-in-chief of... Uh, of, 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 co- of cock ribs. And uh, has <laughs> claimed that it does in fact have dick wheels. But yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it, 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 it's funny, in this photo, it really looks like it looks like that bumper needs to be moved higher up, like that the frame needs to be moved higher up or something, and then the whole skid plate could be higher. You know what I mean? Does yeah. Look like it All that well? needs to go. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I don't need, I don't need any of that. Yeah, but so, and I'm curious after you drive it to hear your thoughts, but the AT4 to me, like your truck, that the second generation Colorado and Canyon 
felt like an honest truck. Like it did things the way a truck does. It has physical controls. Yeah, yeah. Everything has yeah. kind of been normalized for a midsize truck at that point. And the new Canyon 84 to me felt kind of cheap. Like everybody was talking about, you know, the headlight switch moving to the screen instead of being a physical switch. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that kind of mentality about it, about them putting stuff on the screen instead of having to make physical buttons, it, it felt yeah. like, Whoa. yeah, it felt like every, it, it, it just felt cheap to me. And so this, this is the one that I got to experience, which was the trail boss on the new Colorado. Uh-huh. And I was uh-huh. like, oh my God. It it is everything was black, everything was cheap plastic. I want it out of it yeah. as soon as possible. Also, whoever yeah, decided I mean, yeah, right? whoever chose that location for the vents in the center should be assassinated. Where was it? <laughs> I would assume that's Photoshop for us. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? There's no trail in any of that image. No, no, no. The vents. The oh, the air, vents. The HVAC vents. These ones down here. Yeah, it'll do fuck all in that spot. Yeah. They're almost but, the location where Toyotas were amazing because they had this vent down here below the yeah, steering wheel. Yeah, they had wheel. a ball cooler there for you guys. Yeah, yeah. dude, I know guys that make they like make their own ball coolers now because they can't I've get them. I've seen that. Like, if, you, if you go <laughs> on Etsy, they're like <laughs> vent. You can like take get like a hose. Yeah, God, it's, <laughs> it's so <sighs> funny. My my that literally <laughs> went so through my buddy and I's off road. Uh, chat message the other day because we were talking oh, about the lack of that vent and they were like uh, you can get these portable fans that'll I'm direct it down below and i was like i don't want to do any of this <laughs> yeah but all my guy friends swear by it they're like no you don't know luxury until you've had a ball cooler oh, dude, i had it in my 80 yeah. series i don't have it in my 100 series <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely definitely uh sucks <clears throat> or it doesn't it doesn't blow. Let's put it that way. It doesn't blow. Yeah, oh. it, no, it doesn't. It I don't doesn't. know. No, I mean, the, my so my Colorado was the first year of the new gen. It's got like 180 bajillion million miles on it, um, <laughs> and they're hard. They're hard desert miles. Mm-hmm. Um, I was saying, this have, is a truck you raced, isn't it? Didn't you borrow it from your dad to race Rebel once? Oh yeah, but that's not a race. I mean, that's that's a rally. It's not a race. But I mean, it, okay. yeah, it's some hard some hard off roading. Um, but at least <laughs> not. It, you don't have to worry about speed. But uh, it at least it's got total chaos, um, upper control arms and king shocks and a lift and that kind of stuff and BFGs. Can you send us a picture of this thing? This is not I'm just trying. like, this I'm is working. not just the, just the Colorado. This is like, got some shit going on. Well, you have to go way, way back in my Instagram, like, like to 2016. I went, I went straight was, Google. Okay. <laughs> it was Bell 2016. Right? Is that when it started? It's at, we had Pokemon on it at that point. Yeah. But, but the problem with that truck, th- what I'm finding is in hot weather. No, that was a ZR2. That's it was the year before. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, in, the, in hot weather, and I'm when I'm towing Buddy up a hill, the cars, the truck's like, you know what? I'm gonna do this with my temperature gauge. Mm. I'm just gonna keep going. I want to keep going. But you oh, can, but, look at me reading. But and I know, I know. Not a lot of things. I mean, I'd like to think I know a lot okay. about GM stuff. Oh, the polka dots are great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, oh my God. F- my headlights so are not that clear anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's a staple of GM stuff. But uh, <laughs> the colder thermostat should fix all of that. Do like a... The wet thermostat? Just get a cold... Like you can just swap a thermostat and it'll open it sooner. Oh, okay. Okay. It'll just run colder. Okay. That's like a staple of GM. Simple okay. Longevity mods. Well, yeah. That- yeah. I mean, it, it, <laughs> and I'm like, it, it's supposed to be able to tow 7,000 pounds. It has the tow package. Buddy and the trailer is only like 4,000. I'm like, this should not stress you. Mm-hmm. This shouldn't stress you. But at going up like Highway 62 up into Yucca Valley, it's like, ah, I don't want to do this at noon. Yeah, no. Oof. Towing so can be so yeah. stressful. <laughs> yeah, no. It is. also the truck is not nearly as clean as this anymore. <laughs> it's so messy. It's and dirty. And... 
picture. I know, I know. It's it. The whole thing needs a detail. That's it, though. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's a good truck. You care yeah, about it enough. I do, I do. It got me. It's getting getting me through a lot, you know. Especially right now, because I can't, I can't really take Buddy down here. So, yeah. in order, so having the opportunity to use the truck instead of the Mazda Speed Miata is really nice. I, I just say about. your other Miata. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not taking the fucking Mazda Speed down here. <laughs> Forgot that she was that. That's fun. She's so cute. She's the best. Oh, somebody was selling that a year for like five grand. I was like, a Mazda Speed? Yeah, I wish I had five grand. <laughs> well, dude, that's worth it though. Is there? Uh, that's really cheap. What's wrong with it? A uh, hundred and seventy thousand miles. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which like doesn't scare me. I was like, you know, wait a yeah, minute. I mean, that's-, that's lower than every vehicle I own. That's lower than probably half the vehicles that I have owned. Because the, the Sequoia is at 219. The uh, 100 Series Lexus is at uh, 202. And the Suburban's at 180. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you why like do, to buy why do you own a Suburban? Huh? Why do you own a Suburban? I have four kids. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, that tells the story. That was like yeah. play out my entire list as large SUVs. <laughs> Speaking of, you pulled some brackets off of it. You want to talk about that real quick? I did. I, I uh, So when I did the leveling kit and it started to make that noise in the front and we couldn't figure out what the noise was, so I was like, F it, we'll pull the leveling kit off. I got all of the leveling kit off except for the um, self-leveling in the Suburban. They it Because it's the Premier trim, it has this like, you put a bunch of weight in the back and the kids get back there the truck will go uh, for a little bit and then it's sits whatever i don't it's i don't know it's matter ride and air ride sure okay i don't i don't know that it's like in the back it's got to have air in the back it's springs so i don't know what it does yeah all i have to do a google yeah Yeah, that's weird yeah but when I install the leveling kit, they literally give you this little piece of metal that's maybe three quarters. Of, yeah, it's about three quarters of an inch tall. It's got literally a hole at the bottom and a hole at the top. Um, and so the hole at the bottom is for a new bolt to go into the original hole. And then it basically lifts up the little suspension arm thing that understands where the height is. Um, uh-huh. And I took the kit off in March. Um, and so have just left it. So it, it the truck has kind of looked like a Red Bull F1 car from a couple of years ago. It's definitely got the rake. Um, and I took it off today. And to be honest, I took it off. But also part of today was, first of all, it was the first day in a while. It wasn't like a million degrees outside. And so it was relatively low humidity. Right. Um, and so it was just nice to be outside today. And it allowed my 15-year-old to also play with um, changing just- tires. Like... I let him run the jack. I was very nice and let him use the floor jack and didn't make him use the bottle jack. Um, and so this is the, I took a shot of the bracket. So like, this is the new bolt is the bottom one. And then the top piece is one of those pieces that spins inside of, as it's got like the wrench on the outside parts. Why is um, it which actually it's got oil on it? That whole thing. I used PB blaster to, to uh, loosen everything up and hadn't wiped everything down before I took it. Okay. Uh, that so that's all it is, is just moving that, 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 stick and it was not a stick but like on pretty the much left, just up. yeah like half inch to three quarters of an inch higher is what it was part of the kit hmm. so yeah not wasn't super happy with the kit um i pretty much have fe- have identified the noise that i was hearing as i think the bushing on the bottom of the left front uh coil over i think there's some sliding going on in there with that rubber bushing and that's the noise that's driving me insane um, cause when I put the leveling kit on it and moved it above the control arm. And so it was doing it way more now that it's back uh, down in between the control arm. It's not as much, but it's still driving me nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you should just turn up the stereo and then you'll never hear it. I, you know, I let the kids talk a lot in the car too. So we don't, we don't make them be quiet. So, but this <laughs> is, I'm just my... it wasn't sway bar. I really was sway bar. We, that. One end was disconnected. I all sway bar is reconnected and ready to go. So this is how the suburban sits now. It is basically just yeah, just a station wagon now is all it is. Giant. Yep. It is fucking huge. Look at how long that hood is. 
Yeah. You could hit six kids on a big wheel before you even knew. I mean, looking out, you must have to look like a hundred feet ahead of you. We do not. It's not that bad. Yeah. Now it is going to take some retraining on my part because it's been canted down with the rake. And so like, I'm going to have to understand I can't see as far now because I've leveled it a little bit. No, I'm just, yeah. I visibility wise it, it for a giant SUV, this feels like you're driving a car because you like, really? well, this, the, um, the Sequoia, it feels like I sit up in it. Like uh-huh. I, and I look down over all the peasants, same way with the hundred series with its lift. And this, I feel like I sit down in it. And so it like comes, it like hugs me. Yeah. No, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. But yeah. And, that, and that Suburban's got, you know, it's got all the muckety mucks and the blind spots and the monitoring and the blah, yes. blah, blah. So, and that, that makes driving a larger vehicle a lot, a lot easier. It, you it, just feel a little more confident. It vibrates the driver's seat bottom oh, when sorry. someone is approaching, and it and it does the sides. So, like if someone's coming from right, the right side of the seat vibrates. This thing vibrates all the time because it's so big; it's always near yeah. something with the sensors. So, why do you think you can drive that car? Dude, <laughs> my wife hates driving it. <laughs> my dad's truck does that, and it doesn't shut off when you have a trailer attached. So, oh, that's miserable. You- if you do the three blink with the signal yeah. to change lanes, it still vibrates the seats with the trailer attached, thinking that you're like just drifting. Oh, it's horrible. It's like massage you seats. Can't the, you can't go into the um, computer, into the infotainment screen and like turn that off. You should be able to turn that off it somewhere be. in the vehicle. You know, I've I've probably towed 5,000 miles driving that truck and my dad's probably towed, my dad and my brother have probably towed another 25,000 miles driving that truck. I don't think any of us has ever thought of oh, Going. To look in the in the settings. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is vibrating, but oh, there's no, it's the like, most guy right thing there. ever. Yeah, yeah, it just hasn't even occurred to us. <laughs> I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Meanwhile, it has to be. I just went through my settings the other day yeah. to change how the truck unlocks and doesn't like instead of like I never have to hit two buttons to get all of the locks open anymore. You can just turn that shit off and one touch they all open because it's always oh, really? me and all the kids. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like, I want so them crazy. all open. <laughs> Dude, cars are so, they're just computers. They're computers. At this point. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I drove a Lucid the other day that I can't talk about yet. Sapphire? Except that it, it was, it's, yeah. It yeah. Was well, crazy. we're friends with Jeff and Johnny, so we have heard some things. They, they, yeah, they, yeah. they may have drag race one. They may have. Oh, yeah. one, I, guess. I did not. We were on we were on public roads, which was a, 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 that's a lot of cars on public roads. Wow, um, a quarter million dollars worth of car on public roads. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I had a babysitter, obviously. <laughs> yes. But you just look at it, and you're like, how? Who? How? You like? You need a computer science degree now to fix anything. Yeah. You know, or any of like, like if the if you're in a in the Rivian, or probably even in the Land Cruiser with all of its special special things and kdss like if that stuff if if that stuff breaks on the trail like yeah what are you gonna do i've i've deduced that not get home not anything newer than like 2020 ever. yeah because yeah. like at that point it becomes a computer science degree not a mechanic oh i degree. i think you need to drop back a couple of years on certain vehicles well, that, i think you need to go down to like 15 like no but like a 2020 language is the exact same as a 2015 language <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, I wonder if I wonder if the like younger kids now, if I mean, if there are even any enthusiasts left, but if them growing up where their ecosystem is in these computerized vehicles, if they'll grow up understanding better how to like how to MacGyver that car, whereas like we started with mechanical cars and now we're in this, we're like living in the middle of this switch, and mm-hmm. it's like, ah, uh, you know. But like, if you grow up with it and that's all you know, that you're able to then understand those electronic and computerized rules so that later you can learn how to break them to improve your vehicle or fix it yourself when it when it breaks. I don't know. I don't know the answer to these things. It's definitely going to be a thing. An answer to that. Yeah. Um, when's the embargo on the Lucid? Uh, the 8th or the 9th? I think it's the 8th. August 8th. We could talk about it. Oh, no. We're yeah, live. this does... Oh, yeah, I am live right now, so you can't do that. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> hold on, let me go look at my... <laughs> But I wrote about it for uh, Green Car Reports, mm -hmm. um, so people can read read about it then. I think it's August 8th at 6 a.m. Pacific time. I know, Sweet. embargoes are weird times. Yeah. 12.01 a.m. Like, what? It's just like the embargoes. I'm like, hey, it's yeah. 6 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day in the States. I know. Awesome. <laughs> so but it's so a Danish car. Like nobody's gonna fucking see it. Yet. That you know what that tells you, Russ. That's a great time to go travel internationally. Hundred percent. Thanksgiving is the time to fly overseas. Oh yeah. It's also so Thanksgiving Day and Christmas Day and Easter Sunday are great days to fly in the states. Yes. Also, nine eleven is a good day to fly. In the states. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What was uh, that? But I've done a lot of holidays, and it's dope. I flew to London Thanksgiving Day in 2012 <laughs> <laughs> for less than $700 round trip. Like it was wild. Oh, like, that's it, awesome. Yeah, it was. It was to go see Top Gear live. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> How'd that go? Uh, I kind of cried the first show, but it was way better the second show. Why did you cry? Because you had to stand for so long. I was no. I was looking at Jeremy and Richard and James May live in person. Like, why should I ever have been near them? Like, it totally messed with my head. Like, I was in London. My kids were at home. Like, it was You're weird. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Aww, you didn't hurt the story. Emotional. I've, I've never heard the Top Gear live story before. No, this is this is a first. Dude, that was that was so. It was 2012, and I had I had just started like writing car stuff on my own, and I found the credential sign up, so I applied for it, and they granted me a media credential. And I was like, sweet, how do I get to London as cheap as possible? Because I was still a middle school teacher at the time. I didn't have any extra money. So I started selling stuff. Um, <laughs> and then because it was Thanksgiving, because it was Thanksgiving Day, I flew out of uh, KC, flew to Houston and flew to London overnight. Uh, and then this was very early in Airbnb days and stayed. I and also didn't understand uh, a ton of... <laughs> European culture, like they don't call them their husbands and wives. Everyone over there is a partner. Uh, so I thought I was staying with a gay couple. Turns out it was a man and a woman. Had no idea because uh, he referred to his partner, Cece. And I was like, well, that could go either way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, not I, I didn't care. Uh, stayed in a tiny room and uh, rode trains everywhere and went to Top Gear Live and got to see the Stig sliding stuff around <clears throat> in the, that big Excel Center in London and it was amazing. It was great. <laughs> I highly cool. recommend. <laughs> yeah, it's too that, bad we uh, can't do that part anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The three of them are. Anyways, yeah. we can. Yeah, uh, the, they I'm have definitely to... aged a lot in eleven years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, haven't we all? Yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. You look the exact same. It's been three years we've been doing the show. So. Uh, actually, sure. my hair is longer because this is all my this is all my COVID hair. <laughs> that um, is true, but. <laughs> Uh, so I'm planning a trip to Sri Lanka. Um, I have a friend who lives there, so I'm going to go see her in September, and I'm planning on uh, renting a tuk-tuk and driving it around Sri Lanka, and I'm very excited. Oh, yes. So yeah. The only other international travel I have in my life is I lived in Bangkok for three years, and tuk-tuks uh -huh. scare the crap out of me. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, I have so many plans for this tuk-tuk. So are you... Is this are you going to do stories on Tuck Tuck Living? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. I hope so. I need to start. I need to start pitching something around. Um, I don't but, think Tuck yeah, Tucks just, apply to like green car culture. No, dude, because Not, it's just a dumb thing to do. It's like when I rode a, the monkey bikes in <laughs> Mongolia. Like, I know. You know what I mean? I know. It's going to be stupid. But so um, there, there is a uh, from Kenya to Cape Town and two Tuck Tuck stories on Expedition Portal. So, <laughs> oh my there God, is really? an audience. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I just signed up with the adventurous to do their tuk tuk thing in the Himalayas. Oh my gosh! Uh, so we're gonna do that in um next Why is that? July, I think. Yeah, July. That's fantastic. It's twelve horsepower, you guys. How are we gonna get it through the Himalayas? I have no idea. Pushing it. <laughs> if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> it's gonna oh. be so much fun. Um. So I figured while I'm in Sri Lanka and I have access to tuk tuks. I should rent one and like hire a guy to show me how to fix it so that I have that knowledge going into this so that that way when we get to the Himalayas and we break it, I'll at least 
have some idea of what to do. And then I'll have an idea of like, what should I take? Is what, it called like, the rickshaw I, run? Yes. Yes. We're doing <laughs> the Himalaya one. I found an image from a previous one, I think. It is wild. Scary. I know. Scary. At least it's on a paved road for this portion, but that looks very right? lacking oxygen. Yeah, I know. I'm a little worried about that. I'm definitely going to get some of those like oxygen canisters to bring with me. Also for the duck. Because um, 12 yeah. horsepower is not going to have a good time at elevation. The no, <laughs> it's not. It's but the, the route... You know, because the route that they give you is like you start here and you end here and we don't care what happens in between. But essentially uh, in July, like we start kind of in, in the foothills of the Himalaya sort of and we end not in the foothills. So at least we'll be going downhill most of the time. Hmm. I mean, there's definitely going to be some uphill parts because you are I in the mountains, but the there's going to be a lot of downhill. This is what I'm telling myself. Okay. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, I think braking with Oh well, yeah, I, I haven't really even thought about the braking. Because going uphill, at least you have two. But see, there's going no downhill. doors. There's no doors, so you can take your feet and, and put your feet out. Yeah. And, and stop like Fred Flintstone. Uh, whatever you need to do Guys, to... It's going to be fine. Give yourself Every confidence here. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of urgent cares in the Himalayans. <laughs> it's going to be fine. That thing needs fucking googly eyes. Look at that thing. <laughs> Those are headlights. It needs googly eyes on the And maybe some eyelashes because we'll be, you know, a bunch of girls doing it. No. Oh my gosh. It's so um, good. I know. What else is going on? What else do you want to talk about before we wrap? Since uh, I am late. Ross is way late now. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, it's I was late because I'm an idiot. Um, I was okay. actually over, <laughs> I shouldn't even say this. I was at cocktail hour at a neighbor's house. And I came home and I was like, <laughs> and, I, and the thing is, too, is I left my phone. I left my phone at the oh, house. So good. That's also good. We can, we are. All, hey, we approve you disconnecting. Are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I want, I, yeah, yeah. No, we, I, I did some ransom errands today and then uh, I went to a Mexican baseball game and that was fun. Hmm. Like local game where both teams were called the Pirates. And I'm like, I don't know who I'm rooting for because they're both called Pirates. Go the Pirates. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was a good day. Cool. Um, but no, um, let me see. So September, I'm going to the Munich Auto Show with Volkswagen, Ooh, and there's cool. going to be like some pretty, some pretty cool new electric things coming down the pike from them. So that'll mm. be good. Can they have? Well, are they at least ditching the switch gear from the ID4 for Windows? Oh, good fucking god! Out. Yeah, I I don't know about that, but I do know I think that the new uh, heating and cooling and like. Uh, temperature or volume <clears throat> controls. I think those actually light up now, whereas before oh, those didn't light up. Wow. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I'm going to turn off my lights because I'm, I'm sitting in the dark. That, I hate um, those two. I've made a lot of decisions in the last 20 years. Yeah. No, I know. Those things are dumb. See, uh, that's just like the way for Dieselgate. Me. Oh, God. I can't <laughs> because this is a stupid decision. At least Dieselgate was an intelligent thing. Yeah. yeah. Horribly, horrible, horrible, horrible thing to do. But intelligent in its horrificness. There. There's some light. Um, my favorite oh, part is how many images exist of this dumb switch gear. So you're going to I know. Going to the Munich. Going to the Munich, then going to Sri Lanka, <laughs> and then um I'll be doing something that's so dumb, right? The same switch for the back of the mouth. So dumb. <laughs> Um, and then I, I have a, a thing happening, uh, maybe a cool thing uh, with Ford, but I don't want to jinx it yet, so I'm not going to talk about it. Um, and then going to do the live show for the Rebel Rally. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Because you guys aren't competing yeah. this year, right? No, we didn't compete last year. We're not competing this year. Um, although Rebecca might be there uh, okay. with another mm -hmm. driver. Which, if they get this ride, it's going to be really cool. So I'm really like, I'm really rooting for them. That's exciting. Um, but it's fun doing the live show. You know, it's cool because yeah. you don't have to compete. Right? There's no stress. Wait, like, you get to commentate. Commentate. Yeah, I just get to talk about other people and like that's just like gossip. So. And if it's <laughs> if everything goes to shit, you just go get in Matt's Earth Roamer instead of being in with the tents with all the competitors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that thing is so crazy. I love it so much. Emily's on my list so, of people to email, so I need to get that done. Yeah, we gotta make that. Yeah, happen. do it, do it. And last I saw, he was like driving Ferraris on a track or something. I don't, I don't know how many cars he has or what he's doing or how many greyhounds he's got. I don't know. 
Greyhounds? What all like that? actual dogs? I know he has at least one Greyhound. Okay, good. That's a good. I was like, wait, we don't need buses. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 not buses, not buses. He has a rescue Greyhound that he really, really loves. But he he might have two, but I know for sure he has one. I need to borrow one of those. I have a rabbit issue. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Rabbits are cute. Yeah. No, they're so like until they eat all of your vegetation and lawn care that you've been But you can deal time with them it. without implementing murder. I know. I I just to be honest, I give my dog shit for not being able to like scare him off fast enough. Oh, okay. dude, well, you didn't totally even get close. Like, yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. But he's a bird dog, so yeah. it's different. Oh, well, as it turns out, a rabbit is not a bird. Here, I'll show you. Oh, oh, oh my god. Cats. Hello. It's Mr. Plots. <laughs> I took them down here in the truck and they were not happy. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> they were like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm lonely if, we, if I come to Baja by myself. Did you <laughs> see, we're, we're doing uh, real automotive journalist nonsense here, but David, David Tracy found yes! cats in his, in the, you know, what was he calling that, that ZJ? He's got like the, or the holy grail of ZJs that he's put Yeah. Here. Something like that. And yeah. it had cats inside of it but no it got even worse because then he had a possum oh god that's really not good the possum went in there to eat the cat food so i don't even know what's i don't even know if those cats are still there well somebody just posted i think they just like autopian posted that they rescued one of the cat one of the kittens and now they have a, a shop like a an office cat. cat they have a shop cat right yeah which is awesome. Yeah, because there, there was a mama cat and like that's oh it. look at that little right? baby oh it's so cute okay yeah oh my god so i commented on david's post like can i have one and i wasn't joking like that's adorable <laughs> i was no, so, i don't know so how you get a cat from california to connecticut but well mm-hmm. i don't know why he i don't know why that car is parked in a lot like it looks like a I supermarket mean, lot i think that i think their like building is in like a complex building yeah i don't i don't know but i see him like doing work in the lot like working on the car in the lot i'm like i don't say look and a a possum yeah and let me tell you california possums give zero fucks about anybody (laughs) well there's the issue the window's open (laughs) well i think he's leaving the window open for the cats oh my gosh he's gonna get raccoons in there too (sighs) They're trying to entice oh, it out. <laughs> like, <laughs> you get, like, the, um, like the cattle days. Or, or the that's the most, it's the most David Tracy story ever right there. Like Pretty just cool. perfect. Oh, I bought the God. CJ I and all I know was cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those two are so, him and Jason are just, they're so wackadoo. I love them so much. You know, I think we were all kind of skeptical collectively about Autopian. It just because launching a new car website these days is like, it's one in a million, you know? Yeah. But yeah. if there was anybody that was destined to succeed through their, like, just being eclectic, it was them. Yeah. And like, it seems like yeah. they're doing okay, you know? They have cats. Well, because they're they really the only cats. place. They're they're the only place where they really cover that wackadoo stuff. I mean, Jalopnik used to be that place, and it's not it's, really that place anymore. It's not really a place anymore. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, is it a thing? I haven't been on a Jalopnik thing in forever. I God, I don't think. I've yeah, been no, it's still it's years. still around. I still um I still read, and I've written a couple of pieces for them. Um, oh, recently. So they're still around, but uh, but. I always went. I always went to Jalopnik because specifically because I loved David's engineering yep. stories, and because he's able to communicate them in a way that makes sense. His JL Wrangler thing was awesome, and I still go back yeah. to that sometimes. Trying to... every time I get confused about crawl ratios, there's an article that David wrote for Jalopnik that I just like call up, and I'm like, okay, wait, yep. what's the math again? Yep. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, and then I went there because uh, Jason Torchinsky just had the weirdest crap. Drop and I'm like, I love and tell stories about tail lights. And yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. now he has <laughs> access to Bo Bachman stuff too, which is also weird and fun. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. More it's, than, it's yeah. so great. So, no, I think I'm a vinyl member at um, 
Ooh. at the Autopian. Ooh, nice. I'm pretty sure I'm a vinyl, member of vinyl. Uh, I wasn't going to go for the Corinthian leather. That was a bridge too far. But <laughs> they just uh, they see. just introduced a new level. Cloth. Cloth for the cheap yeah. bastards. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody else can get away with that. Like this is. I know, right? This is where we've been. No, they're, they're just so, so great. So good. But yeah, Darren, I literally love that they said we're introducing a new tier for the cheap bastards among you. Like they. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Like, yeah, and so like that's what Jalopnik used to be—that kind of like irreverence. And then now, now they don't, you know. So uh, I don't know, yeah, David. If you're listening, send me a cat. <laughs> I don't don't send me one cat. though, because I, I already I have two, so I don't need any more. But I was just saying, like, uh, while I was working on you the can sur- send Chris the possum though. Chris wants the possum. Bob, no, I'm out. <laughs> Those things are terrifying. <laughs> It, well, your dog won't do uh, anything about it, so you can't. No, he he it. he messes with awesome. raccoons and possums. I'm like, dude, get back in here! Like, you, I don't need any diseases. Like, yeah, you know what's not fun? Rabies. Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. It's not. I had it once, and tell, I'll tell you, it was terrible. No. Oh, <laughs> the people actually get it, and like. That's rabies. the clip we'll promote the show with, <laughs> and me going. I had rabies once. It was there. No. <laughs> uh, Do it. I don't care. Yeah, it'll be funny if the AI clips that out for us. <laughs> Seriously, you know when podcasts used to go like the episode title used to be like a joke or a catchphrase from the episode. Yeah, this one would be. I had rabies once. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably tag it with the Land Cruiser stuff at the top, but yeah, that makes sense too. Right, right. Or, or I need a Greyhound. I've got rabbit problems. <laughs> right. Either one. Exactly. Us? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wrap the show up. <laughs> On that All right, do disturbing it. Disturbing and potentially rabid note. Yeah, rate, <laughs> review the show wherever you listen to podcasts, please. Uh, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. We go live now. It's not a standard night because people's schedules in the off-road world are amazingly complex. So uh, we get shows when we get shows. Um, you can follow Emmy. She's at yeah buddy on Instagram. No, but yeah, Emmy. What? Oh my gosh. Yeah, Why do I, I do that every show too. I did it the last really? time every you were on. You said, yeah, buddy. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, Emmy. And I know it too. Cause I just looked at it for an hour. <laughs> I can fight okay, you. I just right. can't say it. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a case of Diet Dr. Pepper for that mistake. I apologize. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, follow Hooniverse, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. I'm not promoting the Twitter anymore just because nobody's reading it. So, uh, we do have an Off the Road Again podcast threads now if you guys want to get on there. Can you uh, do that? I, it was like a, I, I said went in. You should do that. You said no, no, no. no. You are correct. You said we should do it. And the reason I did it is when I went into when you sent the uh, whatever the latest car you drove that we didn't talk about um, to approve that post for the collaboration part. Uh um, The next thing down below that was like, these people are trying to connect with you on threads. And it was like Johnny, somebody else and somebody else. I was like, fine, I'll click. Let me let me see what this is. And that one click activated it. So like, I didn't actually do anything. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so the podcast is on threads. I'm those not cars that we didn't talk about. We should have them soon. Yeah, we'll definitely we can do well, it on the show. Yeah. I uh, Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad. Um, and we did a show. Thank you, Emmy. Yeah, thanks, Emmy. I'm sorry I was late, you guys. Sorry. And well, the best part of this is I don't have to send another email. <laughs> 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 Just the one to say, here's the show. <laughs> <laughs> no rescheduling okay, okay.